Transparency International Zimbabwe conducted the 2018 Annual State of Corruption Report on Electoral Integrity. The 2018 Annual State of Corruption Report interrogates the impact of corruption on electoral democracy in Zimbabwe and the extent to which corruption greatly impedes upon electoral transparency, accountability and integrity. Elections in Zimbabwe since the independence elections in 1980 have been heavily contested and marred by allegations of vote rigging. The 2018 elections were also fraught with a number of challenges which culminated in a constitutional court challenge over the presidential elections results. Driven by the urgent need to pro-offer recommendations on how to enhance transparency and integrity in Zimbabwe's electoral processes, TIZ's 2018 Annual State of Corruption Report centered on electoral integrity. Transparency and integrity within the context of electoral conduct is key in the anti-corruption agenda. Here are the recommendations. Government Reform the government should reform the law to ensure that the distribution and management of public funding is assigned away from the Ministry of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs to an independent ZEC. Implementation. There is need for all stakeholders to implement the electoral reforms required in Zimbabwe so that the country improves on electoral integrity. This includes the alignment of electoral laws with the constitution, electoral financing, the timely addressing of grievances raised by stakeholders, strengthening of government institutions, and restoration of integrity in electoral management institutions to regain public trust. Institutional independence. The government is an element of the state. It is an anomaly that the government administers the ZEC and all the other institutions created to promote democracy. Therefore, these institutions must be independent of the government so that they fully execute their mandates in an uncompromised manner. Government should not be involved in any appointments and funding so that they are able to safeguard democracy. Unity. Despite differences in areas of specialization, civil society should unite and have a clear mandate which feeds into national building without being partisan. This will help the state and the citizens to understand them, how to deal with them and how to perceive them, i.e. whether as partners or enemies. Participation of women. Political parties should encourage women to participate in politics by ensuring affirmative action within their structures. The promotion of women's participation should also be done on the basis of merit and not appointments of patronage. If possible, they should be voted for so that they have the full support of their fellow female members. Culture of non-violence. The eradication of the culture of violence has to begin with the political parties within their structures. The starting point would be to disband the youth militia groups in political parties. In addition, the leaders should lead by example and shun the culture of violence and destabilization in any way.